Hey everybody, it's Craig. So I've had a lot of questions about using this flask and being able to do the core and make pieces like this. So I'm just going to show you how this all works. You, you would already have this, and I have like this kit, and it has like a jig and has some other parts. The first thing, you also get like a thing of black electrician's tape. So you're going to want to cut a piece off. You're going to want to take this part and put it against there. And then you're going to want to tape it in place. Um, I mean, I could make a longer side on this flask, but my goal was to come up with a way to help people that already had the side pour flask. Uh, without having to spend too much money, if at all possible. So, anyways, you you tape that on. Adding this extra makes it better for when you make the funnel and where you you pour the metal. Having that distance is important. So this here gets set aside. That gets set aside. And so the next thing that that I had to come up with was a way. You take the tube and you set it into here. And then there's these bumps here and they fit into the vent channels. And what this does is it positions everything so that it's exactly in the right place. So at that point, we would take some powder now, I've been using cornstarch lately instead of talc, uh, and I really like it. So then you press the clay in, hammer it. Take it off the top. You want to make sure that this is smooth right here. Because when that's smooth, you pull this off and you turn it over, it's going to sit flush. So this, this part here is done with. That gets set aside. And so now, you want to clean off the channel right here. And now what we can do is with this system, you could do, you know, a, a concave band. You could carve a band that has a channel in it. Or you could do something that's got six prongs. Um, so long as the way it's made can push straight in and pull straight out. So then what you do... Now, when I start manufacturing these patterns, which date all the way back into the 1800s, I'm gonna make them in a size nine, and they're gonna have a split on the bottom. I'm not gonna make a whole bunch of finger sizes. It's just way too much work for me. For anybody, it's way too much work. Uh, it's hard to reproduce these to do a good job. So anyways, at this point, that's where this jig comes in. And the jig sits like that. And actually, we'll take that off at the moment. And this will allow us to position this and then tighten these little black bolts to hold that in place. And that comes up. This would go back on, or whatever it is you're gonna you're gonna do, and then you take that hole, make that your top, and then make sure that this is uh, centered. Then we're gonna powder that. We're gonna powder that. We're gonna fit that over the hole. 
and it's gonna make it go straight down. And then you push it in place. So now the next thing is you're gonna take this half and put it on top. And then you're gonna telk it, or not telk, cornstarch. Taking me a while to get used to that. Add the clay in there. This is called red clay. It's a brand that I import and mix here in Tucson. Scrape that off. Now we're going to pull this straight up. And now you can see, we've got a great impression of the bottom. And then what we do, you're going to want to tap on this. It kind of helps loosen it up. And if you put your, there's like little holes on the end, put your thumb on top of that straight up it's going to give you a great impression now at this point you can take this apart you can move that sometimes you got to kind of blow that out then you have this part and this tube fits exactly pull the ring off it fits exactly over the top of this and that's important because you want the core that comes out of here to be the same size as the outside diameter of this. So we're going to take the same clay, and we're going to push it in there. found if you tap this you do it long enough it pops right out and so now you have your core and the core sits right in like that then that gets set aside and now you have this side Now at this side, there's a piece of tubing here. And you want to line that up. So you're pushing right straight down through the center. And pull that out. And you want to have something that's uh, kind of round. So you can take the edge off this hole. So it's a nice smooth transition into the shank. And I also like to kind of open this up a little more, make it a little bigger. And you can get a you can get an idea how big it is by how much space you can see on either side of the core there. So we just want to make sure that metal is going to go down in there really well. And I'd almost say Take that off. And we open this up just a little bit. Then we can put that back on. And we've made that the entry a little bit bigger, which will help with the casting. But you want to make sure that this sits flush down in there on both sides. Of course, you don't want to push it too hard. It'll damage it. And at this point, this is going to sit down over the top like that. And if you look in, you can see it's nice and flush. You want to make sure that's flush all the way around. And of course, I forgot one little major part of this. 
was I thinking? Which is to make your funnel. No way I'm going to do the video again because I forgot that. But I think people can figure out on their own what needs to be done. Just want to pack that down really good so that there's no little bits and pieces of clay. Okay. Now we'll go back to this. Make sure that's in place. Put that back in. Now we have our nice funnel. And on this one, we also have to cover the opening here. It's gotta be sealed. Helps if you already have the tape pre-cut. And standing behind the camera is just kills my back. Just about ready to finish this up. So this is going to have to sit on a vacuum table. As you notice I didn't vent it because I've never been able to figure out a solution to venting it. Um, but the vacuum works great. So that's it for this this half of the video. All right. Thanks.